So people, especially the last few years, people are more conscious about their health than ever before. Sure. Uh, especially in times uh, post-COVID, um, if you're planning on launching an unhealthy food brand, please just forget about it. It, it might work short term if the branding looks cool and if you have a catchy pitch, but um, long term, there's no way the brand will survive. Uh, right. In my opinion. And your brand doesn't only need to be good for the body, but for the planet as well, of course. Right. Hi, Arun. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Abel. Good. How are you? I am doing pretty well. Thank you so much. How is everyone at home? Everyone is well. No COVID here so far. So we're good. We're all good. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I mean, really appreciate you joining me on this chat show. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Awesome. So, hi, viewers. Good morning. Welcome to the new episode of Sustainable Future Foods Talk. Uh, today, we have with us Yeroon from the UK. Yeroon moved to London mid-COVID in August 2020 and found LOA drinks in London. So, of course, LOA uh, Yeroon would be uh, introducing us all to. And uh, as he moved to London in uh, November 2020, uh, LOA is a, is a healthy alternative to an unhealthy soda and aims to be a drink brand with higher purpose than just focusing on profits. The brand is built on the concept of law of attraction for which LOA is an acronym. There's no true good health without mental health and the concept of LOA can definitely bring some more positive positivity into the world. So, Yeroon, I mean, LOA is, is really interesting. So, if you can please elaborate more on that and if you could share your story uh, with our viewers, that would be really interesting. Sure. Um, so, it all started with, uh, with my mother, actually. Um, she had a pharmacy for a very long time. She had a pharmacy for 18 years. And um, since I was very young, um, my mother took over the pharmacy and she started making her own cough syrups and her own lip balms and her own products at the pharmacy. Mm -hmm. um, me and my brother, we were the test rabbits. So we had to try the products and test them and see how long they would be uh, good to use. And um, so from whenever I was young, the wish started growing inside of my head to one day manufacture or produce my own product as well and start selling it. Sure. And then uh, the first idea I had uh, was during my uh, student time, my time as a student. Um, I used to have a lot of hangovers studying. Um, so I thought uh, the ideal product would be a shot that would cure a hangover instantly. Uh, and when I was making it in collaboration with my mom, because she had the, the products or the ingredients at the pharmacy to, um, to make a shot like that. Mm -hmm. When I was making it, there was this one guy in the US um, who founded uh, uh, exactly the same idea that I had. It's called Morning Recovery. It's sold now uh, as well. Um, okay. It does exactly that. So it cures a hangover. Okay. And I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but his concept was amazing. Um, so he used to work for Tesla. Okay. Um, but then in order to keep his green card, he could do a few things. And one of the things he could do was found a company that would make this much revenue a year, and then he would get a green card to stay in the US. Sure. With that story and the concept about his shot, he went on Kickstarter and he, he it was booming business. He got funded in, uh, in one day and uh, he, he was able to stay. Anyways, um, I wasn't going to compete with, uh, with him. Um, I thought he had a great product, so I had to switch to another product. Um, then I thought I'm going to make a vitamin drink, still something healthy, a vitamin drink also in collaboration with my mother because she had the vitamins in the pharmacy. Sure. Anyways, we were making that. And um, one morning I woke up and um, I realized that I was making something for unhealthy people because healthy people don't really need a vitamin drink to get their vitamins in. They get it from their daily food. Sure. So I was making something healthy for unhealthy people that didn't really make sense. And then I came up with the idea of Loa, mm -hmm. um, which is a healthy alternative to an unhealthy soda with a strong message built on a strong concept that's known all over the world. Because the law of attraction has been, well, important in my life uh, for as long as I can remember. And I found that um, uh, 
uh, over 300 million people uh, from all over the world actively uh, use the law of attraction every day to uh, live a positive uh, uh, lifestyle. Right. So that's uh, when I started um, started creating uh, LOA and obviously uh, using only the good things uh, to put in your body. So no preservatives, no preservatives, no uh, uh, cane sugar, no no nasties. I would say. This is this is really lovely. I would I would uh, I'm looking forward to taste it. <laughs> yes, yes. One day will be uh, available in your country as well, hopefully. Yeah. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for this. You're welcome. I mean, uh, Yerun, of course, uh, since you have an extensive experience in the CPG industry in the UK. So if you can please suggest a few tips for emerging brands to identify the right target audience or define the customer in the in the natural food space. <clears throat> yeah, so um, it's important to keep in mind that you're not only selling the product, right? You're also selling the, the concept or the story your brand uh, is, uh, is built on. Mm. For Loa, I could say that target audience is rather female um, and conscious about the health of their body, but also the health of their minds. Mm. Um, that they're into spirituality or interested in finding uh, out more about it. Um, and it's a premium brand, so the target audience has a higher than average uh, budget to, uh, to spend. Right. And there are a lot of questions you can ask yourself, um, like what kind of... Uh, drink is your client looking for what's what uh is is, is your client rather female or male or uh, what's the budget of your client uh, or uh, who exactly would be interested in buying your product and why why are they mm -hmm. interested in the concept and there are lots of uh, questions you can ask yourself sure. and i remember a friend of mine um a friend of mine from belgium who founded his own drink brand um combining grapefruit with tonic um, anyways, uh, he once said to me that um, he could tell whether a client at a golf club where his drink was stocked would order his drink, uh, depending only on which car he was driving and which set of golf clubs he had. Well, I think, yeah, I think if you can get <laughs> that, about your customer, you're either, either a wizard or a genius. Right. Uh, yeah. That, that's interesting. <laughs> Uh, coming down to my next question, Yerun. Uh, so, I mean, uh, how do you see the new consumer trends in the UK mainstream with with so much brands around and and the uh, and around the plant based foods, healthy drink, uh, mm -hmm. organic drink, and all? So, people, especially the last few years, people are more conscious about their health than ever before. Sure. Uh, especially in times uh, post-COVID, um, if you're planning on launching an unhealthy food brand, please just forget about it. It, it might work short term if the branding looks cool and if you have a catchy pitch, but um, long term, there's no way the brand will survive. Uh, right. In my opinion. And your brand doesn't only need to be good for the body, but for the planet as well, of course. Right. Sure. Yeah. So as you talked about planet and all, so I've, uh, coming down to my next question. So sustainability is an important element and you at uh, Loa Drinks are also working aggressively towards it. So what are those non-negotiables for an emerging CPG brand to, to consider? Well, um, at Loa Drinks, we, we use organic ingredients for our drinks and um, it was hard to, hard to source uh, the organic ingredients when uh, when we were working on the, the recipe development and uh, because of that, and uh, also because we wanted the drink to be uh, very delicious, of course, mm -hmm. it took over a year before we got the um, we got the recipe for our first flavor just right. Mm -hmm. um, but in the end, it's worth just going for the organic option and uh, and uh, well, working a little longer on it than going for a non-sustainable option. Mm -hmm. Um, and besides that, we use glass bottles at the moment, and okay. uh, we will be manufacturing in uh, in cans as well when we start uh, producing uh, larger batches. Mm -hmm. My advice would be just don't use plastic, like right. at all. In, in my opinion, if you use recycled plastic, that material once uh, was plastic once. So if you want to get rid of plastic, we shouldn't use recycled plastic either, but just go for glass or alum uh, aluminum, aluminum uh, cans. So, sure. um, but Loa goes also goes um, the extra mile um, by having 
uh, as you said in the beginning of uh, of this uh, chat, um, by having a higher purpose than just uh, than just profit. Sure. Um, we we try to engage with our audience by, for example, um, the QR code on the back of uh, of our bottles. On top of the QR code, it says um, "Scan to get inspired," and when you scan it, you will be redirected to our website. And uh, every time you scan it. Every time you scan the code, you will get a different inspiring law of attraction quote. Wow, that's so that's that's a that's an original uh, way to uh, to engage with uh, with the audience. And next to that, we also made um, an uh, NFT collection. I don't know if you know what an yeah. NFT is. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, very very short. An NFT is a non fungible token. It's just um, it's digital art. Let's put it like yeah. that. Uh, yeah. Very. Uh, very simply, uh, very simple. Pretty um, much in trend now. <laughs> sorry? Pretty much in trend now. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, but we, we <laughs> made a new collection of the quotes we post on our social media mm -hmm. um, and we're selling them. But 100% um, of the profits of the sales of those NFTs, 100% of it will go to charity. And that's another okay. way to, to like be a sustainable and, and a brand that good, that's good for the planet and that wants to be good... Um, and not just goes for uh, for profit only. Wow, that that sounds really interesting. <laughs> it's those original ways of being good for the planet that make well that make your brand stand out, especially in times like these. Sure, I'm sure this is such an such an impactful point. I'm sure this must be uh, super useful for people out there who are genuinely thinking of the planet and uh, really looking forward to, to building a sustainable uh, food brand. Yes. So coming down to my last question for this session, uh, what are those key steps while building uh, LOA drinks you think were important while launching in the UK market, which will be useful for the, for the upcoming brands? Well, you have to keep in mind that um, especially in the UK, um, I found that as a startup brand, you don't really have competitors. Um, mm -hmm. It's more like you're one big happy family helping each other, each other out. Right. Um, and if you start with, uh, with your brand, and the first thing you need to do, of course, is uh, pitching your brand or pitching your product to, uh, to local retailers. And the feedback you get from them can be, can be very, very valuable. And when you get your, um, when you use that feedback to make your product better or do some small uh, adjustments uh, on your product or the branding or anything, um, when you get your product in, uh, in those local retailers, you can use those retailers as a reference to pitch to small chains. Mm -hmm. And then when you get your product in there, you can use those as a reference to pitch at larger chains and so on and so on. And um, there, there are lots of startup communities you can join in the UK. And my advice would be just to, uh, to join every one of them uh, that makes sense for your brand. Sure. You need, whether you need help with your bookkeeping or with your marketing strategy or, or even building your pitch, there's always someone uh, who can help, who can and wants to help you out uh, with any questions or any issues or challenges you have. Awesome, awesome. That, that's lovely and I'm sure the kind of brand which you are building around so much positivity uh, will, will fly off very well and uh, wish you all the best for it and on a, on, a, Yerun, on a closing note if you can uh, if you can quote one uh, interesting line uh, based on the law of attraction moment with, uh, which you have experienced so that will be really helpful <laughs> Do you mean a quote or do you mean... Yeah, like one quote, quote One quote would be fine. One quote. Well, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, let me open, quickly open... Absolutely. Uh, yeah, the yeah. quote base that we have. Um, because my favorite is one of the first ones we post. Um, oh, it's, a, it's a very good one. If it was easy, everyone would do it. That's one of the most important quotes. If it was easy, everyone would do it. Every exactly. time you have a challenge, every time you've got an issue, the only thing you have to think, if it was easy, everyone would do it. And that will get you through the, through the challenge and, uh, and help you uh, solve the issue. Even. Lovely, lovely. Yeah. Wonderful. So uh, great. It was, it was such an interesting uh, 
concept which I learned today around the law of attraction. And uh, thank you so much for your time once again. And uh, I'm sure this will be super useful for our for our viewers as well. So thank you so thank much you. for joining in, and uh, you have a great day. Ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Thanks. Thanks. Bye bye.